if people could imagine being in a, a sermon at the Vatican and somebody comes down the aisle riding a Harley Davidson, people would recognize right off that a Harley Davidson has no business being in the Vatican. But they don't recognize it here, that this is our Vatican, and that when motorboats come up this river, you know, on their holiday, that it is disruptive. Coming of age ceremony is probably the most important time in a young girl's life. It's when she's changing from a young girl to a woman. And in our tribe, she will be the person who will carry the culture to future generations. The rites of passage are extremely important to all peoples. And we've lost our rites of passage, so much of society. It's the women always that have brought forth their traditions, that have made sure that they have lasted from generation to generation, whether it's white, black, brown, yellow, red. It's always, if you look, it's always the women that are bringing the stories forward, that are bringing the traditions forward, that are bringing all those things forward. It's always the women. We're bringing our next chief into her womanhood. Our ceremony requires her to be across the river and swim back through the river to the other side where she will take her place among the women first. And whenever a boat comes through, it causes disruption, even in the sound of it. The waves on the water causes things to change. Everything is disrupted. From her hearing it to us feeling it, the vibrations of that boat, whatever oils are dropping off that boat, the fish that are getting out of the way of that boat, uh, changes things. These ceremonies are um, our life, you know, and our, our connection with with this land and, and, and all of life. We stand for, for life. You know, that's what our religion and way of life is all about. And it's puzzling to me why the Forest Service and the Sheriff's Office and the Rangers and the Coast Guard, <coughs> airplanes and uh, helicopters are spending so much money coming up here to observe. Because if we wanted them to do that, you know, during a uh, purity ceremony, during the Bacchus Tonus, that's what we're asking them to do, is keep people out. And they say they can't do that. This is a people, person, religious freedom issue. It's not color. It's not perspective of that. It's us against the government trying to interfere with our personal rights. I was extremely fortunate and honored to be a math tutor for Marissa for whom the puberty ceremony will be done. It's very important this be the year that it happens, you know, without interference from the outside. It not only happens, you know, um, once in her lifetime, but the fact that she will be responsible for future generations doing the exact same thing that she did. And she will be in charge of the next chief it's our tribal tradition. It's what makes our tribe continue to the next generation. It's what ensures that our tribe is going to survive. It ensures that our culture and our way of life is going to be carried forward. If this ceremony is done, then we know that that ceremony will be done somewhere down the road again because this person is going to be the next tribal leader when it, the time comes. My name is Colleen Sisk, and I'm the chief and spiritual leader of the Winnemum Wintu tribe. Uh, we're holding a Bothless Chonas, which is a puberty ceremony for uh, our young girls to come across and join the women. We are in a struggle with the Forest Service to prevent any boats from coming up and disturbing our ceremony the way that they have in the past. We're asking for supporters to come in and help us. We'll be holding this ceremony June 30 to July the 3rd. Our intent is to close the river to all boats, and we hope that people with good hearts will, will see the need here and help us to uh, fulfill our traditions and our culture and our way of life to go into the future. That's, our, that's the only thing that we're asking for, is that our future generations be allowed that opportunity, that right, to carry on the Winnemum way of life.